Hello my friend and welcome to Python for Visual Effects, Animation and Games in 3ds Max. My name is Alexander Richter and today we are looking at all the chapter of our 8 weeks journey. The main focus of this masterclass is to teach current and future artists in Visual Effects, Animation and Games the essentials of scripting in 3ds Max while focusing on using it for our professional work. This can also be a first step to become a technical artist or technical director. During the first five weeks of this masterclass, we establish the fundamentals of Python, while in the final three weeks, we apply this knowledge to create and manipulate 3ds Max using Python. Each week consists of a 60 to 90 minutes video lecture supplemented with a finishing assignment. This allows you to practice the week's lecture while getting a 5 to 15 minutes personal feedback video of how you can improve in the future. We also have a weekly live Q&A together in which each student is encouraged to ask questions. Every Q&A session will be recorded for a later rewatch or if you were not able to participate. Additionally, you will be joining our incredible Discord community to interact with the current and alumni group. After teaching and coaching online for years now, the combination of on-demand videos, practice assignments, personal feedback and being able to ask questions during the Q&A and in our community has crystallized as one of the most effective ways to learn a skill like scripting. Let us dive into the overview of each week's content. Today we start with week 1, Introduction. First, we will talk about the artist of the 21st century, which also introduces the concept of why. Every one of us has a specific reason why he is taking this course, but it's still supportive and motivational to understand what it can mean to be an artist of the 21st century and how much impact Python or scripting in itself will have on your future work. The next part is about Python basics. So. Basically, we dive into what exactly a scripting language is, compare them to programming languages, how can we use them, what are the benefits and what are the differences between the Python versions. Finally, we will dive into the coding part in Python. The first section will be about comments and prints, which are the absolute fundamentals you have to know if you want to start with Python itself. Then. We will have a look at all the different data types we need to handle information. And last but not least, for this week, we look into variables which are one of the soil parts of any scripting or programming languages to handle the previous data types. Store data. This week we will be looking at our script editor to have a basic understanding of the tools we are using. Then we dive back into coding and explore lists and dictionaries which are, as you can imagine, an essential part of Python. We also learn the difference between the two and how to use them appropriately. Afterwards we discover some useful functions and expressions we need to manipulate the newly learned data types from this and last week. We wrap up this week with pseudocode. What is pseudocode? Where do we use it? And what are the benefits of pseudocode instead of already writing Python code from the beginning? Loops and ifs. First, we finally explore loops, which will give us an enormous function to create batch process and more complex scripts. I was waiting to teach this topic from the beginning since it is simple enough, but quite essential for most scripts we will create in the future. Next, we explore indentations and how grouping and association work in Python compared to programming languages like C++. This one is closely tied to the loop section. We then look into how to compare data types to be ready for our next topic, if and else, where we create statements of when specific code parts should be executed and what happens if nothing is true. This is followed up by combining loops and ifs to show their true power and add some additional function to enhance both together. Escape characters will add an additional layer to our strings and will become a necessity the moment we have to handle windows paths. So I decided to tackle them here. Functions and names. First we explore the awaited topic. I mentioned functions multiple times during this course already. Now we will have a look into what functions are and how we really use them in Python. 
Essentially, this week focuses mostly on functions since they are vital for our future workflow and allow us to create more complex scripts, which we will need when we move on through the course. We follow this up with setting some naming rules. Essentially, we will have a look into how and why we should name variables and functions in a specific way, which will help us to write more professional and clear code in the future. Since we already talked about indentations and grouping, we expanded this week by looking into scope, local and global variables to understand how the grouping affects the life cycle of variables. As promised, we revisit pseudocode and look at a small script we could have been asked to write for our work to manipulate the scene. A small teaser of what to come in week 6 when we finally use Python in context. Import and debug. We start this week with imports. Imports allow us to use Python scripts from different sources, which in return means we will be able to distribute our script through multiple files. This is a game changer in terms of creating more complex and reusable scripts and apps in the future, similar to functions. While we are talking about files, we have a brief look into Python files themselves and what are Pyke files. Next, we explore errors and tracebacks and find out how to read and debug them properly. Error handling is one of the most important skills in scripting and programming. That is why we look into common exceptions, what they mean and how to avoid or fix them. Additionally, we add the concept of try and accept, which allows us to handle potential areas and either catch them or end our script properly without destroying our scene with corrupted data. This week also remarks the finishing line for our basic Python introduction. We have tackled all the important bleeps and bloops you have to know to use Python successfully. We will conclude with some interesting remarks regarding topics that could be helpful to us when we arrive at a more advanced state of scripting. Let's start with our final Python introduction chapter. In the final weeks, we'll conquer 3ds Max, learn how to create, delete, modify, connect and disconnect nodes with each other using scripting while talking about scene handling with save, load, import, reference and export. Max scripts. We start this week by looking into the difference between MaxScript and Python and all the ways how to convert the help that we get from one into the other. Next, we have a look into more daily functions that help us to manipulate nodes and materials in the scene to be used as functional content for our applications and scripts. By now, it should be clear that we mostly explore new functions in 3ds Max while their syntax is defined by Python. Finally, we put our pipeline hat on and learn about the power of startup. Startups set up 3ds Max during its initialization phase, which allows us to add pipeline and script paths to the start and manipulate the software to our liking. We combine this with custom menus to make our newly created script easy to access for us and our team. Max apps. This week with some Python fundamentals by adding classes. Classes are a more advanced topic for sure, but an essential one that we need to engage with the advanced UI library PySight. Next, we look into simple pop-ups and how we can create practical dialogue windows with predefined messages to inform, ask or warn. Finally, we split our PySight 2 exploration into two parts. First, we look at the Qt designer and how we can drag and drop our way into our custom UI. Second. We connect our UI with the functional part in which we fill those pretty buttons and boxes with life and purpose. We then wrap up our 3ds Max journey with the last assignment in which we develop the application that we set up to create on week 1. Let's start! You can find the full masterclass on alexanderrichtertd.com or click the link in the description. See you on the next video.